Hello and how are you? My name is Winnie Barawa and in today's class I'll take you through knuckle code and in this lesson I'll focus on types and its causes and uh, in the photo illustration below we are simply going to look at how a cord or the umbilical cord can actually wrap around the neck of a baby or a fetus while they are growing. So if for those who are new here, this is Medic Academy channel and we focus on learning lessons concerning medical causes varying from either nursing, medicine, pharmacy. So let's start by defining what a knuckle cord is. So we all appreciate that the umbilical cord is the communication channel between the mother and the child in terms of supply of nutrients, supply of oxygen, and also supply of um, protection uh, components such as antibodies. So however, the umbilical cord is supposed to be free from entanglement with the child. But there's some moments whereby the state, I mean, it's a state whereby the umbilical cord wraps around the neck of the fetus, either completely or covering at a 360 degree. And the wrapping of the cord can occur at different levels of the pregnancy. It could be during the pregnancy itself. Some of the wrapping of the cord can happen around the period of labor, or it can happen during the birth process. And the cord can wrap differently. Some of the cord can wrap loosely. In some instances, it can be very tight. In some instances, it can wrap just once around the neck, and other times it can wrap twice around the neck and this is not just limited it can wrap more than once also in some other instances so via illustration this is how it looks like so we have our fetus here growing in the in the in the in the uh, uterus and uh, the cord has two portions it has it has the placenta part and it has the fetal end so this cord, because of different reasons, it can just wrap around the neck of the child. And the state of where the cord is wrapping around the neck of the child is what we are calling the knuckle cord. Okay. So we are saying that the knuckle cord is a state where the umbilical cord has wrapped itself around the neck of the child in different form, either loose, tight, once or, or twi once or twice. But we need to appreciate that the umbilical cord has two ends. It has the placenta end here, okay? And then it has the umbilical end of the child. So the cord can wrap, can wrap sorry, or in two types. You can have a knuckle cord that is type A, known as the unlocked, and then you can have a knuckle cord that is type B, what we also call the, uh, the locked. So let's start with the type A, what is also known as the unlocked pattern or the unlocked knuckle cord. With the type A, we describe this as a, plus, a, a state whereby the placental end has crossed over the umbilical end in a state that is unlockable. So where is the placental end and where is the umbilical end? So you said the placenta, the umbilical cord has the placenta end or the end that is attaching to the placenta. And we have the umbilical end that is the end that is attaching to the umbilicus of the child. Now, when we're looking at the types, you look at the placenta end and how it is relating to the umbilical end. So in type A, the umbilical end is over. In short, it is lying on the umbilical end. So the placenta end is lying on the umbilical end or it's over the umbilical end. So this state is described to be unlockable. Like it means it's free sliding here. So you're saying it is free sliding and it can easily disentangle. Like it can free itself and does not cause major gender or risk or worries to the child. Right. However, let's move to the type B and see how it's different from type A. So type A, we are saying the placental end of the umbilical cord is crossing over the umbilical 
end of the plus of the umbilical cord, giving an unlockable pattern or an unlock pattern, meaning it is free sliding and it can spontaneously disentangle. Either if the child moves or the child does some manage movements around the uterus and it can freely disentangle. However, with type B, we call it the locked knuckle cord. So with the type B, remember again, we are describing this in relationship with the placental end to the umbilical end. So in the type B, which is also known as the locked end, the locked knuckle cord or the locked pattern, the placental end of the umbilical cord crosses under the umbilical end in a locked pattern. So what do we mean by this? In our diagram here, the placental end is this one here, and it is locking or it is crossing under the umbilical end. So if you look at this, this is our umbilical end, this is our placental end. So in the locked pattern, it is under. So it entangles our neck in a locked pattern. And we are told that sometimes this can feel very tight and it's rarely disentangles. And because of the state that it really disentangles, and if the child keeps on having multiple movements or very frequent movements, it can risk stillbirth. Because unfortunately, with this type, it's rarely disentangles. It easily gets tight if there are too many movements, and this can risk fetal, fetal, I mean, a stillbirth for the child. So those are the two main type one and type type A, sorry, and type B. So how do we differentiate what what will look different so this is type a and you're saying type a is free sliding pattern free sliding pattern can easily disentangle does not cause major risk to the child and as you can see here the placental end of the cord is over the umbilical end of the cord giving it free slide and it can easily disentangle however in the locked pattern of type B, the placental end of our umbilical cord is under the umbilical end. So this is quite locked, mostly risks being tight, and it can cause stillbirth. It does not disentangle easily. So that's how the difference is. Type A, the placental end is over the umbilical cord. In type B, the placental end is under the umbilical end of the cord. That's how best they can give it as a differential. So what could be the risk to the mother and the fetus when it comes to knuckle cords? Well, for the mother, there is minimal or no effects at all to the mother. However, to the fetus, there are some risks based on how tight the knuckle cord is. In most stated, it's been reported that there's no major effects that the knuckle cords can cause to the fetus because mostly it develops due to unknown reasons or sometimes it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very random event that can happen. But if in a state whereby the knuckle cord is very tight or it has undergone multiple tightening, you can have a state of hypoxia. And hypoxia, by definition, is a state of low oxygen supply to our bodies or to the fetus tissues, causing to a state of distress or fetal distress. And most of the time, you can detect this state when you're monitoring fetal heart rate for the child, and you can detect whereby either the, the fetal heart has lowered or it's low. Or if you are detecting it under ultrasound during the stages of pregnancy growth, you can state poor fetal movements as an indicator. You can state also reduced fetal heart rate as one of the states and all that. But mostly for the child, if the knuckle cord is very tight, then you can detect hypoxia in the form of fetal distress. So many reasons can uh, cause knuckle cords. And it can vary based from number one, excessive fetal movements. We need to appreciate that fetal movement are good signs that our child is active and the growth is normal and it's 
positive sign for, for mothers who are pregnant. However, excessive fetal movement can risk the, the development of knuckle cords, or rather it can risk having a cord around the neck for the children. In other states where there's abnormally very long umbilical cord can risk complications because a very long umbilical cord means anytime the child has a movement, it can easily wrap around the neck, it can easily cross the, the, the neck and, and have multiple, you know, wraps. The multiple wraps are also a risk of high risk of complications because if it wraps so many times and the cord is wrapped in such a way that even it forms such, such things like knots or tightening of around the neck, then it can bring further complications that you can, we will see later on. Another risk or cause can be polyhydromnias, where we define it as excessive amniotic fluid in the amniotic sac. And polyhydromnias is... A good environment, yes, for the child to move, to have multiple movements, but it's also a risk because with excessive fetal movement, then there's risk for development of the knuckle cords. Other causes could be multiple pregnancy in the form of twins, triplets, quadruplets, and so on. And with this, because of the multiple state of the pregnancy, there is existence of of uh, huge uh, expansion for the uterus and so the movement of these multiples can risk the knuckle cords to or the cords to wrap around the neck but also in in multiples that share amniotic sacs it's also more risky because they can easily wrap around the cords around each other and cause knuckle cords sometimes there's just random events with no explanation and mostly this happens where we have the labor moments so during birth or labor you can have just random change of events and you can have a neck a, a, a cord around the neck then in other states could be poor cord structure the cord has a jelly like covering that is supposed to cover it what we call the watson jelly and the watson jelly is supposed to have a lubrication state where it's allows even if there's a cord around the neck it does not tighten because it is it is very slippery in a in a state and this can make it you know just slide out of the neck but now if there's insufficient what's on jelly it means there's be friction and this means there'll be no adequate um gel like management or there will be no easy sliding for this cord so if it wraps around the neck it does not disentangle for that purpose so with the poor cord structure it's said to be one of the reasons that can also lead to to a cord around the neck or knuckle cords for this purpose so which symptoms which signs and symptoms can you see where maybe you're worried there could be a cord around the neck unfortunately the knuckle cords are very asymptomatic meaning they do not present with any signs and symptoms when they're beginning but as maybe it gets worse then you may have the fetal distress. And this mainly happens if there is now tightening and there's redu reduced supply of oxygen and nutrients to the child and we start detecting reduced fetal heart rate, reduced fetal movement, and so on. And that's our introduction on knuckle cords. And if you like content such like the ones that we're doing, you know, feel free to comment contribute on to what we are doing you can like also remember to subscribe and share with your friends so that we can grow our channel our, our i mean our community of members at medic academy as we keep learning so up to now thank you very much for being all to the end and uh, see you in our next class